Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Vicky and I'm here with my husband Cameron. You always do that. <laughs> and today we are doing a Q&A video answering some of you guys questions that you sent in. We just want to talk to you guys about how we've grown this year and things we've been working on growing together emotionally and working on our health as a couple. Because of the quarantine we've had more time to focus on supporting one another in our health, physically and emotionally. So that's why we are partnering with Abriva to talk to you guys about being kinder to yourself, especially when dealing with something as sensitive as cold sores. So cold sores are very common. Cam deals with them often and I've had them as well. And they can be a bummer and kill your confidence. Yeah, so when I get cold sores, I hate it. I feel terrible. I don't want to see anyone and you know, it typically affects me being affectionate. I don't want to go on dates. I don't want to be out because I don't feel attractive. It's, it's annoying. It's a bugger. And it even makes me nervous to bring it up because I feel like just by bringing it up, that one may come. You know. <laughs> and anytime either one of us is not feeling our best, we feel bad for one another. It's hard to not beat yourself up about it because there's so many stigmas surrounding cold sores. But I try to remind myself and Cam that it's okay. Nobody's perfect. And it's nothing to be embarrassed about because it's only temporary, especially if you use Abriva. We keep Abriva in the house at all times. Anytime you feel one coming on, it can get rid of a cold sore in as little as two and a half days when used at the first sign, which for me is usually an itchy, tingling sensation. You can easily find it at your local store. I'll be sure to put a link in the description box for more info about Abriva. Cold sores are just one of the things we deal with as a couple, but there are many other ways that we've been supporting each other. This year has been a very health conscious year as we've been focusing on how healthy we are as a whole because of this pandemic. So this year I turned 30 and we've both been working on our diet and our health to ensure we're staying stress-free and staying healthy and, and as safe as possible in these uncertain times. We wanted to answer some of your questions regarding health and things that we're working on on how we've been supporting each other and growing together this year. I asked you guys to ask me some questions on Instagram, basically just regarding how we've been supporting each other through this year since it's just been such an uncertain time. It's been really challenging. Um, so how we've been supporting one another, whether that be physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, so we're gonna answer those questions now. So the first question is, how do you all balance self-care and being together during the pandemic? A lot of people ask, how do we maintain our own personal space? How do we not overwhelm each other with our selves? A, a big part of self-care for me is doing things that I love. I'm a big hobby guy. So whether that's writing a song or going to the golf course and playing golf or working on my golf game, um, there's so many things that, that I like to do to keep my mind uh, free from stress and, and and anxiety because there can be so much of that with what's going on. Um, I try to keep myself uh, busy mentally. That gives me energy to come back refreshed and you know rejuvenated to see what's going on with her and checking in on her. Earlier on in the pandemic, we were kind of on top of each other. Like I was working from home and I was you know all my computer stuff is all over the place downstairs and she's like you have a whole office, like put all your stuff in there. And then I'm messing up her workflow with, you know, the things that she does. And so, you know, just trying to provide a healthy balance and a healthy space. I think we only dealt with being in each other's space and like bombarding each other for like a, the first month or so in the quarantine where we really couldn't go anywhere or do anything at all. Um, at that point, it was still kind of winter here. So we couldn't really like go outside because it was cold. So it wasn't like much to do. Um, but then, the golf course is open <laughs> when spring hit it was like golf season and golf is already a social distance sport so he was like i'm about to be on the golf course every day and he literally was gone like every day at the golf course and i didn't mind because i like spending time by myself but we're already we're already the type, the type of people that like to do things separate when he's downstairs doing his thing working or watching tv like i'm upstairs chilling I don't want to watch TV with him. Like, I don't want to watch golf. I'm I, I'm perfectly fine going upstairs and taking a nap. Perfectly fine with that. So um, I think we're, we're both really good at maintaining our own personal space. I'm more of an introverted person anyway, and he's more of an extroverted person. So it works. We're balanced. I'm going to have my self-care time. But we do have self-care things that we do together like yeah yeah we know, do we do many petties and yeah we do we you know. yeah once once the nail salons and stuff opened up yes because we both needed pedicures we were scratching the sheets up it was bad <laughs> but we definitely like to do those kinds of things together so we go to the nail salon together and i'll i'll have him like do his skincare i'll be like babe use this or like i don't know like we do yeah. we did do skincare together we have our time together healthy balance healthy balance yes how has this time changed 
how you all communicate through stress and sadness. When Cam was about to turn 30, I was having like a low key. I felt like I was turning 30 and I'm like, oh my gosh, midlife crisis. <laughs> he didn't even feel it. I felt it. I was like, babe, oh my God, you're 30. We had been locked in the house for like two months at that point. So I, my mind was just racing with all of these thoughts. I just been thinking about things for like two months that I, I was overwhelming myself basically. I had to just let it all out at one point. Yeah. I'm like, I'm about to explode. So like, I'm just gonna literally tell you everything like in my Rex. head. <laughs> I, think, I think maybe we just communicate more because we have the time to. But it's pretty much the same at how we communicate since we're in the house. I mean, that's normally where I get all my feelings out anyway. Um, or unless we're like driving the car or something. And I'll be like, so how are you feeling? Yeah, and I... It's hard to, to break him sometimes. Not that he needs to be broken, but there's sometimes I just want to know what's going through his head, you know? And nine times out of ten. Like, how do you feel about turning 30? Give me a speech. I'm like, there's <laughs> nothing going through my head. <laughs> She's trying to bring and pull something out that... That's not there. Like, if, if I'm thinking about something, like, I let her know immediately. And if I'm not thinking sure. about nothing, like, I'm legit like, oh, what do you think? I'm just looking out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many thoughts, and I think that he has thoughts, like, I have thoughts. But my thoughts are like amplified. Like I don't know why I have so many thoughts, but when we're stressed, we can tell. And I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted him to kind of like, you know, go to my doctor and like get his stress levels checked and everything. Cause I'm like, I know that you stress about things. I just don't know, like, I can't see it. When we did go to the doctor, I do suffer from high stress. It's not I don't even consider it stress because it's like, because it's not feeling, it's not emotional stress. Yeah. You can have emotional stress or you can have environmental stress from like the air quality can be bad or allergies or stuff that you eat that puts stress on your body. Like, but we try to help each other through that. So I'm always like checking on him, making sure like, okay, did you lay down? Did you, you know, take time to yourself to like, just think, did you get off your phone for a little bit before you went to sleep? Like I'm always trying to check on him. So how have you been dealing with this? How have you been dealing this year mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? I've been dealing with this year. I was literally thinking about this when I was getting out of the shower, but I don't freak out. I think we both do a really good job of remaining remaining calm in a crisis. I just don't freak out. Sometimes people like think I'm not taking something serious because, because I don't, don't freak, freak out. out. Same. I don't panic. I just don't see the point. Like there's no point in me freaking out about something I can't control. You can only control what you can control. And that's, that's me. I, I do a good job of controlling me, controlling my emotions, and if, uh, effective communication with my wife. If I am feeling something, uh, I communicate it with her and we try to talk through it, work through it, or do things to help our mental, uh, emotional, and spiritual space. So that's how I handle it. Yeah, same. Um, I think for me, I'm, I'm an internalizer. I typically will internalize my feelings, but having people to talk to is always helpful. So, I mean, I'm gonna like, bombard Cam with every single thought that I'm thinking all the time. <laughs> he probably doesn't like it, but it is what it is. This is what you signed up for when you married me, so. But I also have friends too who I can bounce ideas off of and talk to them about certain things. For some reason this year, although it's been kind of like, you know, on fire, um, I have maintained a level of patience and peace that I've never had before. For some reason, I do really well in crises. I, I'm able to be like, no, it's fine. And that's not to say that everything is going perfect because it wasn't like, you know, we all dealt with some type of issue because of the pandemic. Like plans were canceled, money was lost, opportunities were lost. I mean, th there was a point where I was a little stressed, but I also was kind of just like, you know what, it's fine. Things are gonna get better, you know? And for some reason, I was just able to keep that mentality so um i also spend a lot of time in the quiet i usually always spend time in quiet have quiet time but like this this year was like even more quiet time and i just loved it like looking at the trees outside and not like hearing anything is awesome that's pretty much all i've been doing <laughs> it keeps me it keeps me sane you know any tips on how to maintain peace when you're an overthinker i overthink about various things and perfectionist when i do that i just step away and go do something that has nothing to do with what I was thinking about. <laughs> I don't know. There's, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta step away. Yeah. Um, yeah. Recalibrate. That's one of the things I said on social media. I was like, you know, all this crazy stuff going on, it's not normal for you to see and be bombarded with all of this trauma and tragedy every single day. Like, and continue to scroll through your feed and see it over and over and over again. It's tra it's traumatizing to your brain. You're not meant to soak up that much trauma at one time. So you have to take time away from that to keep your sanity. 
And if that that's with anything. Like, if you see something over and over and over again, it's just going to be ingrained in your brain to think about that all the time. So you have to, like, focus on something more positive or something else that's not going to stress you out. It helps to just take, take a break and do something else that's relaxing, calming, and soothing to your mind. What advice do you have regarding mentally supporting loved ones through difficult times? Check up on somebody. Like, yeah, just be there. Pull up. You just never know, what, like, what a simple text, like, hey, I was thinking about you. How, how's it going? Because everybody's going through something. Even mm -hmm. the people that you don't think are going through anything. Yep. They're going through something. So just just showing somebody that you're thinking of them, being thoughtful, being caring, card, flowers, groceries, Anything. little things, like yeah. literally. Yeah. That's that's what that's what I would suggest. I've I've had to learn how to be how to just be an ear and not a hand. I'm the type of person, I'm a fixer. If I feel like I'm needed, I'm gonna try to fix you. Um, but I've had to learn over time that not everybody wants you to be a helping hand and they just want you to listen um, without having a response. Like Not listening to respond, but just listening to hear them out. Some people just need you to hear them vent. Like They don't need a solution, they just want you to listen. So that's what I've tried to be more mindful of is that some people just want to to have somebody to like listen to them. Am I getting better at it? I don't know. But <laughs> I try to like just listen and not be critical or like overly like no you should do this you this is what you need to do you need to do this like you know like just like i'm i'm here for you like i support you i'm here for you if you need anything I, but i'm not going to insert myself where i don't need to be inserted <laughs> i should have said that okay but you know what i mean be an ear and not a hand or, or you can be a hand if somebody wants you to be a hand or you should be a hand if you feel like they need help but don't overdo it. How do you allow your partner to support you if you're used to dealing with stuff on your own? You have to be vulnerable. Both parties have to be vulnerable. And both parties have to compromise. There's times where I felt like, oh, because I'm the man, I have to like handle all of this. And like, I needed help. I didn't want to communicate that to her. And then she's like, all you have to do is like, Ask me, let bro. me know. Just let me know, bro. Like I'm here. So being vulnerable, Realizing you're not Superman, you're not Superwoman. <laughs> None of us are. You can't do it all on your own and by yourself. Yeah. Even if you're not in a romantic relationship, I think you need to still learn how to be vulnerable with like friends and family or people in your circle. Because um, some people don't even like, they won't tell their friends when they're going through things or, you know, so nobody knows. If nobody knows, they can't help you. Drowning and nobody can save you because they can't hear you. Like, you have to be able to speak up and say, hey, I need help with something because you can't do it all by yourself. That vulnerability is key in any relationship. Earlier in the pandemic, how did date nights change for y'all or what did they look like? So earlier in the pandemic, we when we couldn't like go out to eat or anything, because going out to eat is my love language and I love to go to new restaurants and try new restaurants, but clearly we could not go out to eat. So we did a lot of car dates, you know, we just we found a lot of things on TV to watch because there were there wasn't much we could do. I saw a lot of people doing like picnics and stuff outside, which was cute, but we pretty much just did car dates because I like to go out to eat. So we just went to different restaurants and ate in the car. What areas of growth have you seen in one another this year? Well, Vicky's learned how to be ear, not a hand. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen her grow spiritually and like for me, that's like the best. I've learned how to support her better. When he turned 30, he hit a whole new level of just like camness. All of a sudden, he's like a grown man. Although, you know, the pandemic has kind of taken him away from going to work. He had more time to kind of develop his own creative abilities, which is great. Earlier this year, I was like, I want to see Cam do more like creative things. And he did. He got to do more creative things. And that really made me happy. Your golf game crazy this year. You know what I'm saying? Like one of the other things that's really been like cool is just to see how how he's made connections stuff through golf, because that's cool. Um, there are a lot of connections to be made. I think that's the things that I that I saw him grow in. Thank you guys so much for chatting with us about the importance of health and wellness. During these times, you really need to be leaning on your loved ones and supporting one another. Be kind to one another, encourage each other to continue to learn more about how to take care of yourself. Thank you so much to Abriva for partnering with us on this video. Again, be sure to check the description box for more information about Abriva. We love you all and stay safe.